Good evening, everyone. I am your host and instructor, Lainey Shaughnessy, and welcome to Spindle TV, your best source for CNC CAD CAM training videos. Spindle TV is brought to you by Digital Woodcarver, inspiring your creativity and providing you with the tools to create your own unique masterpieces. Hello everyone, <laughs> I had my microphone turned off. I appreciate everyone coming in uh, this late evening hour. Let me shut my office door here. And uh, coming out and seeing us, it's been a busy day trying to get new files and updates and things done for uh, Burl and we're trying to get everything arranged for he's doing a lot of work on his end. Uh, we moved into our new building, our new location, and uh, it's been wonderful. All right. So tonight we're going to look at uh, three very uh, simple, very cool little projects. They're good little, uh, I don't know, uh, you know, gift projects or they're good little items that, you know, pe they're useful so people would buy them if you're selling things and all. Uh, and, um, and some of them are, you know, fun and yet practical uh, so we're gonna look at uh, three different projects uh, small projects and all and uh, make make some see what we can do uh, with it I'm gonna go ahead and get my Vetric software opened up <clears throat> uh, at least I think I am there we go so how are you all doing tonight? Uh, it's gonna, probably going to be, a, because of starting so late and all, it's probably going to be a small class tonight, but we'll see how it goes. And let's see if I can pull up some pictures of what we're going to do. Or just look at, you know, uh, let's see here, downloads. All right. <laughs> Stand by. Let's see here. Router. Well, all right now. Let things get started off on the right foot. Handy pro. I called it handy projects. That's what I was looking for. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get switch on over to our Vetric software. And here we go. Now in this project, um, I think one of the pieces is going to have to be a double-sided project because of the way it joins the joinery. Um, they may, they both might be because of the way the joinery is, but we'll find out. Uh, we'll see uh, what the best way is going to be uh, to get them. Uh, I think I think only one of them is going to be a double-sided project. So I'm going to set this up uh, the first one up as a uh, single-sided project and uh, we're going to be oh goodness let's see here I don't even know the diameter of the bottles uh, so six we'll go we'll go 12 inches wide yeah 12 inches wide and let's go 12 by 10 for right now we'll size it down if we need to uh, half inch or three quarter I'm gonna use three quarter inch material we're going to touch off on the material surface and we're going to start from the XY datum of the center and we're going to go ahead and click OK. So now 
two of the uh, projects that um, I have uh, kind of pulled up, and we're not going to make the exact projects, but I like the way they look. So let's take a look at those um, uh, first off. And oops, let's uh, kind of zoom in here. So I like the uh, beer bottle opener, soda bottle opener, bottle opener type projects. I really like those. I like those as knickknack gifts uh, and things for wall hanging bottle openers and all. Um, but I saw this caddy on Pinterest and uh, I just thought it was neat. It was like a little six pack bottle holder uh, for those weekend fun outs. And I like the fact that, uh, you know, it has the bottle opener. It has the magnet that catches the caps. And I just like it. So for a little novelty type gift or something, that would be cool. But also the individual bottle wall hanging bottle makers we're going to look at. Uh, the second project, um, let's, uh, any kind of phone or tablet caddy, um, <clears throat> or, uh, support or charging station or anything, you, you know, whatever it may be, uh, are really handy. Um, I, there's a lot of different styles that I like, uh, and so, but I, this one really caught my eye. Uh, I believe this was also on Pinterest and everything, and I just like, I, I like the way it looks. Uh, so I want to make something similar to this, not this exact one. You know, I want to be, I want to be different a bit, but I just kind of really like the way it looks. And it's a little practical gift that someone would buy. Or, you know, it'd be a great holiday gift, whatever the case may be, and very minimal material uh, and, uh, you know, easy to uh, to do. And I think this one's going to be a double-sided project because of the joinery, uh, the two mortise and tenons, uh, the one at the base and the one up at the top of the neck. And um, so we're going to look at, we're going to look at that uh, probably as a two-sided project. So these are the two. Now the third one is, uh, you know, I got to looking today on the things that I want to update in my kitchen, and um, I've got an old uh, coffee mug uh, holder rack kind of on the wall with some of my favorite coffee mugs, and I thought, you know, why don't we make something like that, and that would be a nice little gift for the kitchen. So these are very simple little practical gifts. They're kind of in the beginner uh, stage of things, but they they involve joinery. Um, and uh, two-sidedness as far as uh, one of them does, uh, joining letters and welding. So it's not really the project at hand, you know, that's important. It's, it's, the, it's the teaching and the tools and the, uh, the things that we're going to do. Uh, so, but I really like these two pictures. Now, this is not my picture, not my idea, but, uh, you know, give credit where credit is due to uh, the designer of it. Very elegant. Like it a lot. And I want to emulate it. I don't want to be the same one, but I want to kind of emulate that layout. I like the base, uh, the flow of it and things, and, um, you know, see what we can come up with. All right, so the first, um, if I can get uh, back over there, the first project we're going to look like, look at are our bottle openers, whether or bottle openers, whether it be a beer caddy type bottle opener or just an individual wall hanger. Now, as far as resources, uh, one of the things that uh, we can do if uh, that tab opens up, let me see here if I can get that tab to drag over here on the screen. Amazon.com on Amazon. We can uh, purchase the bottle openers and uh, <clears throat> that would attach to our uh, pieces here. So uh, a, a favored I like for as far as like on the rustic individual body open, bottle openers, uh, this three piece set of wall mounted rustic farmhouse cast iron type bottle openers uh, that are really nice. And um, they've got a really kind of uh, rustic uh, look to them. I mean, they're 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 just hammered, you know, uh, type cast iron and all. And uh, as far as on a newer uh, side of things, uh, we have the uh, 
uh, where's our two piece stainless steel set? Um, here's a set of eight wall hanging bottle openers for 13 bucks. Can't beat it. Here's a 12, a set of 12 uh, rustic style bottle openers for 16 bucks. So, um, you know, there's, uh, <laughs> there's quite a bit, but uh, uh, we have the uh, stainless steel, and I know there's two. There's a, oh, I thought there was a two piece of stainless steel uh, that uh, that are really nice um, for a more newer look, you know, and things. So as far as the supplies, that would be the only supply you would need for the bottle opener, and you can find them on Amazon.com. All right, so I'm gonna look at the individual bottle openers and. Um, we're going to uh, look at a couple of things. So I'm not the greatest at drawing a bottle type body, you know, for the body and everything. So we can look at tracing an image, uh, you know, to kind of get our initial shape and then we can uh, pull it out or we can draw it from scratch and, uh, and do some vector shaping. So I'm going to show you both ways. I'll do an image trace on one side and we're going to draw it out on the other side of this board. Uh, because we should be able to get two out of this piece. Um, so the first thing that I'm going to do is uh, we're going to jump over here into Google again. Uh, Google is your best friend when searching for images. I just like it a lot. I'm not a Bing guy. Sorry, Bing. Um, but uh, Google gives me what I want when I want it. Uh, so let's see here. Bottle vector. And all right, so I'm going for a very simple uh, body profile because I'm going to be making it much wider than it is and things. So uh, for this, I'm just going to tell Google to filter it out and only show me images that are larger than 800 by 600. We want a nice high quality image to trace. Uh, it makes life much less difficult. Uh, and um, the uh, body style, it doesn't have to be a filled in uh, uh, look and things, but uh, it, you know, similar to this. Now this is a blurry image. I don't want it uh, you know, to be blurry. Uh, so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna tell Google on the type of image, I'm gonna tell Google to show me line drawings because I just need an outline. And sometimes Google will give me what I want in the line drawings. Sometimes they won't in the line drawings. And I have to go back to the any type. But let's see if um, we see anything. And I don't. Uh, if, you, if it was going to be here, it would be at the top. So let's go back to any type of image. And let's grab just a general image. And save image as. I want that kind of that beer bottle look, uh, soda bottle look and stuff. Uh, so this is gonna be a bottle vector. Save it as a bottle vector in my file. And let's go ahead and import that bitmap for tracing, the last icon first row of your file operations for anyone that's new with us tonight. Uh, when we're importing a vector file, um, uh, not a vector, I'm sorry, a bitmap image, it has to be traced so import bitmap for tracing and we're going to go into my downloads folder we're going to find my handy projects folder where i saved it and we're going to grab that vector file all right so not a very big image i'm not uh but it's uh gives me clean enough lines to work with um the shadow i'm not really too concerned about on this side and everything so we're going to go ahead and trace this image out uh, I am going to use the black and white trace. Uh, I'm going to turn the fading off and I'm just going to come in and grab, uh, get it back as far as I can. Let's see here. I don't want that shadow down the left side. So I'm going to come to, let's see here, right about here. All right. Let's see here. Let me look again. Back off to there. All right, so about 84% on this. I'm going to use my default corner fit, my default noise filter, and I'm going to preview this image uh, to create that shape, and I'm going to apply it uh, after it's traced. It is traced. If we turn off the image, you can see the tracing. Uh, that gives me my general shape, and we're going to close this tool. 
Now in the layers box, uh, I have a bitmap layer that the software created for me, and I'm saying this, uh, you guys and girls who've done this for a while, you know the you know the routine, but for all the new users, um, <clears throat> we're going to uh, uh, kind of explain, but in the layers box, which can be accessed from the top or down here in our layers, we'll notice that the software created a bitmap layer for us, and this little light bulb here will hide the visibility of that layer. But basically, we want to hide the picture because we no longer need it. Okay, so um, we wanna make sure layer one is bold and active. That's the layer we're drawing in. And now I can click on my image and my image has two vectors inside of it that I don't need. All I care about is the outline here. And so um, on this uh, image, it's if you notice when I select on it, it's all grouped together, meaning it's the whole thing gets selected, all the vectors. So what we wanna do is in our drawing tab, we can use the edit object menu and we can ungroup these objects. That way it breaks them into individual items. Or if we're using our keyboard shortcuts, uh, U for ungroup and G for group. So if I hit G on my keyboard, that's group and U for ungroup, keyboard shortcuts. Uh, that way you don't have to make that mouse action over to the menus. Now I'm gonna select uh, holding my shift key down both of these items and delete them. And I'm gonna take this uh, small shape here and I'm gonna select it, and if I double click on it, it puts the shape into what's called transform mode, and you'll see these boxes around. We're gonna go ahead and size that up, and I'm going to kind of get it on my board here. I'm gonna be altering the size because I want it much wider uh, in things, but uh, we've got our bottle here. Now, uh, might as well go ahead and get the size out of the way. I wanna take uh, my right side while I'm in transform mode, I wanna hold my shift key down, and I'm just gonna drag it out. There we go. All right, now let's look at if we were uh, drawing this out by hand, how we would uh, draw these vectors and weld them together. So if we just take a look at our uh, bottom here of the bottle, you can kind of imagine what that shape is. It's our rectangle tool. Um, we have a smaller rectangle coming up for the neck and then a couple of ovals for the top. So let's draw this out and, and uh, see what we come up with. So for my rectangle, I'm just gonna go ahead and uh, make it wide as well. And I want that radius to bottom here, but I don't want it at the top. So I'm just gonna go ahead and put my manual radius in. I could come in here and do a radius up here. Uh, da, 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 da. And yeah, let's do it here. Uh, we'll go with the corner type as a radius and I'm gonna go with a uh, half, uh, let's go three eighths. Three eighths inch radius and click apply on that. And that looks good. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and we still got our draw rectangle to open. Now I'm gonna focus on the neck. So I'm gonna have another smaller rectangle here I don't have to go all the way down or anything. I just want to pass this line, surpass this line. And I am going to turn the, uh, actually, no, I'm not. I'll leave the radius on for that one as well. Uh, let's close that. And for this, I want this upper rectangle, which is going to represent the neck of the bottle in the center, left to right, you know, on my material in the center of this uh, rectangle here. And I wanna go ahead and um, come in to my alignment tool. And if I select this smaller rectangle first, cause it's the object I want to align, hold down my shift key and select the right bigger rectangle last cause it's what I want to align to. Now I'm aligning to a selection and that last item, keyword last item that we select is what we're aligning to, it's our selection. So I want this centered left to right, this first icon under the center category, uh, just to kind of move it over. There we go. All right. Now, the uh, bottleneck, I'm gonna have it not curved nicely into the neck here to kind of create the shape. Uh, and then the neck is going to start to cone. Uh, so the first thing I wanna do, cause I'm just gonna get my lines drawn in and then we're going to um, come in and uh, do our node editing that we need. So let's go ahead and look. we're gonna draw a, um, 
a line use our straight line tool and I'm gonna go probably right about here a little ways down and I'm gonna draw a line from here and I'm gonna use my center line uh, you know my board center line there I'm gonna use that as the snapping point that way I have a an exact line now if I notice that I just brought my mouse over to the top of the line that I just drew and what that does is it wakes up that node and you'll see this dotted line shoot across so it kind of shows me where I need to uh, so I can be in alignment with the right side my line will be in the alignment with the left by that dotted line so I woke up that vector it's called smart snapping and geometry snapping and again I'm gonna bring this down and on the inside here I'm gonna snap to that corner there now I'm gonna use my space bar to finish off that line doesn't look like a bottle yet but it soon will now we're gonna go into node editing the first thing we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna select this line here and I'm going to go into node editing and the line if I put my mouse right on the line I can right click and change it to a Bezier curve and this is where I want to kind of start getting my shape so I want to kind of start uh, pulling this in and I want this to start kind of curving out so notice that I'm grabbing these anchors so I have two nodes my starting point of this line and my ending point and attached to these nodes are anchors that control the curve of the line as I pull them extend them and things so what I want to do is I want to kind of get my curve into shape now this anchor that's attached to the starting point I want to kind of actually pull it down ever so slightly um, -bum -bum. okay right about there and the same thing with this uh, vector here if I select it and go into um, <clears throat> actually I'm not gonna do that I'm gonna make it easy on you guys that way you don't have to try to match up the anchors and the curves and all we want it to be consistent so we're gonna delete that one and we're gonna come in here and uh, if I get out of node editing mode and I select this I can hit the copy button up here or right click and choose copy and I can take now and double click on this line and go ahead and move it over and I can mirror it so I'm, gonna, I'm not going to create a mirror copy. I'm just going to flip it uh, horizontal. I'm not going to flip it about job center. I want it on itself. There we go. And now I can just bring it in and snap it to my vector. And now if I hit the paste button, it'll paste that original back in place. Uh, yes, Doug, draw half in mirror. You're exactly right. And so... Um, so we've got the start of our neck and it's kind of a wide neck right now everything is real wide we're gonna size it down and skinny it up after we get it together but now while I'm in node edit or I'm not in node editing anymore but uh, I will be again let's get into node editing I want um, these guys here to kind of cone off uh, a little bit of a taper and so what I'm going to do is uh, on these curves here I don't know if I want it to taper that much if I bring these two endpoints right here together so I'm going to grab these two nodes and I'm going to use my left arrow key and uh, go one two three very small amount I'm gonna grab these three nodes here and go uh, left. I, I was using the right arrow key before, sorry about that. Uh, and uh, one, two, three to kind of get that taper in there. And then on my uh, lines here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pull them over into place and just snap the green node, which is the start point of this line. And if I wake up this guy, oh, there we go. It gives me a little dotted line where to snap to. All right, so a little bit of a taper, not much of one, uh, but that'll work. All right, so now I'm going to use my interactive trim tool, and I'm going to go ahead and start trimming some lines. I'm going to get rid of all these lines in here. Starting to look like something. All right, 
Now, this line was overlapping, and so was this line here. Uh, so we have an overlap point right here, and it's not going to trim uh, to the, those overlaps. Uh, it's not going to connect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, and I'm going to extend this up. ever so slightly and if I select these guy the top here and these two lines I can open up my join tool it's a funky looking bottle right now I've got three open vectors selected now if I join them they will close uh, as one and now I can come in and start to refine my shape now I haven't made the ovals at the top for the bottleneck but first thing I'm gonna do is little wide so I'm gonna let's let's kind of narrow that down some and uh, let's go ahead and use the down arrow key and bring that down a little bit and let's go in a little bit more all right starting to look like something and then I'm gonna go into node editing mode and I'm gonna grab these top nodes up here and I'm just gonna use my up arrow key and kind of extend them up And now I want to create my kind of uh, shapes up here. Now, for this, uh, if we look at the bottle here, we have some undefined shapes because it was a traced image and everything. I'm going to refine that a little bit, uh, a little bit better. Uh, so what I'm going to do is, the first thing is I'm going to draw an ellipse. And uh, let's see here, we'll just kind of, oh, way too big. Let's get it kind of in position. I'm going to snap to that center and I'm going to come down probably, 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 probably right about there. And let's go ahead and pull this up now to create that upper area. And as far as the lower area, I'm just going to use nodes. So let's go ahead and trim this up. And what I want is I don't want this. I don't want this. I want to keep that flat top across, so I'm going to get rid of that. And I'm going to get rid of this. That's going to kind of give me my upper shape. And then I'm going to go into node editing mode. And I'm only doing this, guys and girls, so you can kind of see how you, know, how you can draw versus tracing. Uh, how you can draw items and things. And we're going to round this up in a little more while we're in node editing mode. Uh, we're going to take this node here. And I'm going to pull this up a little bit just to get a little bit more round on the edges. And let's see here. Yeah, much better. Now I'm going to right about here. I'm going to put my mouse on the line and insert a point. And right straight across from that point, I'm going to put my mouse and insert another point. And this line in between, I'm going to get rid of this center node. I'm going to delete it. I'm right clicking to delete. And if I, you know, I get this nice rounded top here, but if I wanted it even more, I could go to a straight line, but of course that doesn't look very well. Um, and so I am going to undo that control Z because I want that rounded shape but I do have two vectors that I got to delete there's two little sneaky vectors behind that line so select them and delete those out so that's gonna kind of be the top uh, formation um, I could pull these anchors out a little bit um, you know however I want to divine that top now down here on the neck I want to simulate this second kind of a lip uh, that's coming out on the left side here and so this is gonna be my endpoint and therefore this node here the black node right here I'm gonna grab that and I'm actually going to pull it down and I'm gonna use my left arrow key okay down and left arrow key and the I want to kind of get these side by side um, 
right below it, because I'm going to be doing the same thing with this here, right below it, I'm going to right click and insert a point. Uh, this one over here, I'll go ahead and use my right arrow key and kind of, uh, so, ooh, I got to zoom in to select it. And I'm going to pull that out a little. I went, I think I went three clicks. And then right below this point here, I'm going to insert a point. Now these uh, two points here, uh, they're going to be straight lines in between to kind of get that uh, little bit of an angular shape here. And so I'm going to take these two guys. I'll start with the left one and I'm going to move inward. Not that much. Just, uh, let's see here. One, two, three, four, uh, about four clicks. So now I'm going to use my left arrow key. One, two, three, four. Pull that together and start to kind of simulate. I'm a little off, so let's uh, use the guides. We have guides here, and I want to snap to this corner. This corner, let's zoom into that. I want to snap to that corner there because what that does with that guide, that shows me where this one needs to be. So when I go into uh, node editing here, I can pull this down to get into that. Oops, let's kind of make it a little smaller to keep that uh, alignment going. Now, from my center point, you know, I, I don't really need consistency as far as things, but I do want to make sure that my points are consistent. So I'm pulling guides down out of the ruler and I'm gonna snap to this one and that shows me where this point needs to be. So I can kind of at least keep some consistency not a whole lot but you know some I don't want it to be perfect a lot of people are anal and want things perfect right we don't want to be perfect all the time we want a little bit of inconsistency so that way it gives it that homemade look all right I'm gonna pull those guides back up and let's uh, look at what we got very similar in shape a little bit wider than the bottle on the left that is easily remedied if I wanted to keep them consistent I could look at my bottle on my left and I could go into my size tool and I could see that it's 8.7304. Uh, I'm sorry, 3.5263. <laughs> 3. Uh, I'm going to copy that value. If I click on this here, I can come in and I can paste uh, that value there. And click apply. And then on my height, I can just hold down my shift key and pull that up a little bit you know to kind of if I wanted to if I really wanted to get the, the same shape and look and all that but I wanted something you know, a little bit different but this would be how we would draw out our shape Ta -da. kind of deal now this project really uh, it really needs to be a two-sided project now looking at it the beer caddy doesn't but these do because on the back side of this, uh, we would have a um, keyhole, uh, keyhole, uh, you know, for hanging on the wall because it is a wall mount, and also we have to have a little pocket for our magnet to go into, a little pocket for our magnet to go into, and I'm gonna simulate that, or I'm gonna take this uh, while we're here and I'm gonna simulate that in a two-sided job. So we are gonna go to the job setup and dimensions. By the way, that is this icon here under file operations. First icon, second row. And I am gonna turn this into a double-sided job. I'll touch off on the same side of the material as I flip it, and I'm gonna flip it along the x-axis. We'll click OK. All right. Um, I want this one a little wider. I don't like the skinniness of it. Okay. Now, uh, for this uh, back side here, we're going to go ahead and put our keyhole in. And it's most likely going to go somewhere up on the neck area. And all we do for a keyhole, if we're going to use the keyhole gadget, if we're going to use the keyhole gadget, is we just have to draw our circle. And I'm just going to put a uh, 3 8 inch circle there. 
over here, I'm going to do the same thing. And um, I want this lined up. And so I'm going to snap it to this here. And if I hold down my alternate key, it will keep me in alignment. Maybe did I lose it? Come on back here. All right, so we're lined there. And I want this guy to be centered. Uh, and so if I move him ever so slightly, I can find my center line there. Bring him back where he is. All right. They're probably too high for keyholes. Let's go down just a smidge because I want my keyholes to be about one inch in length. So that's good right there. All right. Now, depending on the size of the bottle opener that you purchase, the height of the bottle opener, because on the front of this, we're going to be carving some kind of fun sayings and stuff and all. Uh, there's one bottle opener that a friend of mine, uh, Dell made, uh, Dell Sullivan. He's a customer digital wood carver as well, but he lives here in Ocala, Florida. And I kind of liked what it said. So we'll, we'll use that, uh, as a sample. Um, but anyhow, let's, depending on the rare earth magnet or what have you that you're going to use, we're going to be carving a pocket out and we're going to nearly be, we're going to nearly be penetrating through the material. Uh, but we're not, we were going to leave some skin on that front, uh, you know, enough that the magnet can still attract when you pop those bottle caps off and that bottle cap falls. We want that magnet to pull and stick to that. Uh, some people, you know, put the magnet in the front where you can actually see the magnet. I like it to be hidden. And, uh, so what I have to be very mindful of is where one two things one where my keyhole uh, is and where the magnet pocket's going to be because when I'm V carving on the front whatever my saying is or what have you I don't want to carve into my pocket or my keyhole hole right we don't want to do that so Got to be mindful. And the wonderful thing about the software is when I switch to the bottom side, we can see the vectors so we can see where we're putting our text and things. All right, let's uh, switch back over and finish up what we're doing here. So for the uh, magnet, now I've got rare earth magnets of different sizes. The smaller ones uh, that I have that are about a quarter inch in diameter, they're not very strong. They don't hold a lot. Uh, the one inch, uh, diameter ones that I have are very strong. Uh, and I think, I believe I, I don't know if it's a true half inch. It might be like millimeters or something, but I do have one that's kind of, uh, middle that, uh, would be perfect for this. And if I'm not mistaken, I'm going to go with a half inch diameter cause I believe that's what it is. Now, mlcswoodworking.com. Uh, it's got a sale. Well, according to the magazine, I don't know if the sales ended yet or not, but they had a little flyer come out of the magazine and all. And they had 80, 80, I think it was 80 rare earth magnets for 30 bucks, uh, which is crazy. That's not a bad price for a variety of sizes and nice, nice magnets. Very strong. Okay, so uh, I'm going to go a half inch diameter and I'm going to be low. Low. And I'm going to get this one centered. Uh, I'm going to use my smart snapping to center it uh, because I, I have that center woke up. So anytime I move onto that alignment stuff, it shows me my little dotted line. You can see, uh, you know, varieties and things. And let me get back to my center. There. Wake up. That is centered, right? Hold on a second. I might be lying to you. Let me check here. Center on my bottle yeah it's center i knew it was i wasn't lying to you all right i'm gonna hold down my control i'm gonna double click on this hold down my control and my alternate key at the same time 
And what that's going to do is that's going to keep me locked into a plane horizontally or vertically. So I can only go one of two planes. I can't see my mouse is in the middle of the bottles. That, you know, I'm only, I'm only it, it limits me to two planes, X or Y. So I'm going to use that to bring over and snap to the center of uh, my bottle here. Oh, let go of the uh, mouse button before you let go of the control button. So let me go control Z. Do that again. Control alternate. I let go of my, um, my, I let go of my, what am I trying to say here? I let go of my mouse before I let go of my control or my control key before I let go of my mouse and it didn't copy it. All right, now I noticed something here that this one is a little off. So I'm gonna use my alignment tool for this and this and my bottle. I think it's because my neck might be a little crooked. Uh, we're going to center. Yes, yeah, so it was a little off. And let's check this one because if that one's off, that one's off. No, it's not, no, it's not. Let's see here. Yep, they were off just a smidge. That's where the analness comes in. All right, so these are going to be little pocket holes. Now, in this three-quarter inch material, I'm serious. I'm going to be probably cutting to like a point six eight points. You know, I'm going to leave a very little thin skin. I want these magnets, the the power to to come through the wood, and so I don't want them very thick. Uh, alternatively, you know, uh, uh, people can uh, cut the hole uh, in a plug, use a plug cutter, and they can uh, cut the hole from the front. They can put the magnet in, and then they can use uh, the plug that came from the plug cutter or whatever, and uh, they can glue that in there and sand it or saw it flush. There's a lot of ways to do it. Well, we got a CNC, so we're going to use our CNC. Um, oh, Dennis, you're not late. I was late today, buddy. All right, so there's our vectors for the back side of this. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and uh, jump in and grab these two circles here. And let me think now. Let me, let me think hard about my placement of those for the keyholes. That bottle popped. Yeah, that's good. All right, I'm going to use my gadgets. Gadget. Keyhole gadget. This is going to be a vertical from the bottom to the top. I want to go upward with my slot. And I want a depth of slot to be a quarter of an inch. Let me see here. There's going to be a lot of wear and tear on this. People are going to be popping tops. Pop a top. Okay, so let's go. I'm going to go 0.3. And... Um, the length of the slot, one inch. My entry hole is uh, three eighths. My slot diameter is the neck of my um, keyhole bit, which is three sixteenths. And for my bit, you just you don't you don't program your keyhole bit into the tool database. You use a dummy end mill because all that does is it uses the tool's uh, settings to control the speed and the feed. So I'm going to select my eighth inch end mill because that's my good speed and feed for my uh, keyhole bit and we're going to click OK to create those two keyholes. All right, all right, Lord. All right, now that has already created the keyhole toolpath, that gadget and everything um, and the uh, kill toolpath is done. So all we have to do now is our drilling toolpath. It's a pocket, not drilling. Sorry, pocket toolpath. Uh, drilling, if it was the same diameter as the bit that I'm using, uh, in this case, it's not. It's a. I'm using a quarter inch bit for this, so it's going to be a pocket. Zero start depth. I'm going to go point. Let's see, seven five is five thousandths of an inch. Uh, so if I go point seven. I'm gonna go 0 .69, 69. My magnet should be able to pull through uh, 60 thousandths of an inch. And uh, let's see here, I am gonna be using my quarter inch end mill for the tool, so we hit select and go into our tool database and click OK. 
Um, I want to offset cut is fine for the pocket and this is going to be my magnet. Magnet hole and 0.25 EM in mill. Calculate. All right, let's preview uh, all the tool paths that we've made so far, which is none really. Now, when you're previewing a tool path, the keyhole slot, the keyhole slot will not show you the round entry hole. It's only going to show you uh, basically a little slot with which which is going to be the diameter or the width, should I say, of whatever diameter dummy bit that you used. Uh, but uh, that looks fine to me. All right, now let's go ahead and get our alignment pin holes in here because we've got to flip this board. So I'm going to use my quarter inch dowel pins. And I'm going to bring this over a little bit. Don't need to be too close to the edge. And I'm going to mirror it. That way it's even on the other side. I want to create a mirror copy and flip it about job center and flip horizontally. Done. Now, you know, normally in one path or another, we are uh, creating uh, profile cuts, whether we cut all the way through, you know, when we flip the board over for the final cut, or we cut halfway through from one side and halfway through from the other, uh, however you do. Now, I'm going to uh, through cut, or, or I'm sorry, I'm not going to through cut my alignment pin holes. What I'm going to do is uh, rather than through cutting my alignment pin holes and then cutting into my waste board that one inch deep, uh, you know, it's a lot of wear and tear on my bit uh, and that drilling and everything. So I'm going to cut these holes uh, halfway through, three eighths of an inch. And then uh, in my waste board, when I move this board out of the way, I'm going to run my waste board cut. I'm going to zero out on the top of my waste board and I'm going to cut my 3 8 inch holes in there. Uh, and what that does is if it's late at night or something, I can, um, I can run, if I create it this way, I can run that path, key, uh, path, keyhole path that I'm going to cut at any time. I can shut down my machine that, that night, go tomorrow, what have you, and I can return. I don't have to do it all in one operation. Okay? So, um, with it being so late, if I were going to cut these out tonight, I would do it this way. So, that's how I'm going to show you. So, we're going to, we've got our holes here. We're going to do a drilling operation because I am using the same bit, the same size diameter, and I'm only going to be cutting three eighths of an inch. I'm going to use a little bit of pecking and I'm going to have it uh, retract out to pull up those little bit of chips that are there. Uh, it's going to be an upcut bit uh, that I'm going to be using my, not a drill, my upcut spiral bit. And I'm going to, this is going to be my uh, material alignment pin holes all right my material alignment pin holes and now with those vectors still selected I'm gonna go ahead and uh, create another drilling tool path and I'm only gonna cut into my waste board uh, my three-quarter inch waste board that I'm using uh, I need to make sure whatever my dowel pin sizes are so I make sure I get the right cut, you know, the right depth and stuff. So uh, I believe my dowel pins are about three eighths of an inch long to a half an inch. So all I need to do is uh, to make sure I have plenty of clearance is just do a half inch depth drilling. Quarter inch depth drilling, sorry, quarter inch depth drilling. Uh, so I'm going to go 0.25. 0 0.25 in my wasteboard, quarter of an inch deep. And I am still going to use pecking uh, for it just so it just cleans the hole nicely. And this is going to be my waste board pinholes. 
if I create that toolpath, then um, I can, I could literally, because working off a of center and that, uh, I could carve those two holes anywhere on my table. If I didn't want to carve them, uh, you know, right where I do all my main carving, I didn't want to have holes or something, I could carve them anywhere on my table. And I could go over and flip that board uh, and mount it and just zero out on the center of it and be fine or what have you. But I'm going to do it in the same area. But, uh, you know, uh, it gives us the opportunity to do it later. And if you want to know more about that, there's a wonderful video in the uh, Vetric uh, tutorial videos. It just demonstrates. It's not a tutorial like that you work with or anything, but it demonstrates the concept uh, behind two-sided machining and everything. All right, so we've got those. Wonderful. And while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the back half. That way I'm not cutting into my wasteboard or I don't, if I didn't want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, for whatever reason, I could cut all the way through on the one side. But again, you know, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and just cut through. All right, so we're going to create a profile cut. I'm going to be on the outside of the line. I'm going to cut uh, straight through, halfway through uh, my board, my three-quarter inch board uh, with my quarter inch end mill. I'm going to be on the outside of the line. Now, that's going to change a little bit on my radius here, the way my bottle cap looks. Uh, and um, it's fine. Uh, it'll still look good. It's not going to cut it away too badly. Uh, so we're going to go outside the line. I don't, I, I'm going to add some tabs and these tabs are only going to be uh point two in length. They're going to be, um, 0 0.2, 0 0.125. They're only going to be an eighth of an inch thick, so it's going to be 0 0.0625 on this side. And then 0 0.0625 on the other side for that one-eighth inch thick tab. We're going to edit tabs. I'm going to throw one down here at the bottom, one over here on the side. Uh, let's bring this one down just a little bit. And one here at the top. One at the top. One a little high, one a little low, one in the middle. All right, close and calculate. This is uh, side one. Profile cut. Oh. Hold on a minute. My tab thickness got uh, deleted for some reason. 0 0.0625. Calculate. There we go. All right. So if we preview that cut, we're going to have our profile cut. And um, it's going to cut halfway through. All right. So now, uh, again, with this, if I needed to uh, um, get back to it another day or something... You could. All right, let's flip it over to the other side here, and let's go ahead and uh, before we do, actually, I'm a goofball. Uh, we're gonna take our shapes, and we're going to copy them to the other side. And now we can flip over. And all we need to do is uh, create our profile cut for this side and our V carve. So I'll go ahead and create the profile cut while I'm at it, while I'm in the toolpathing mood. Uh, this is going to be three eighths of an inch, three quarter or a quarter inch end mill on the outside of the cut. I am going to add tabs. It's going to put the same tabs in the same place, same tabs in the same place uh, for me. And we're going to, this is going to be the profile cut side two point two five end mill make that s bigger so I can read it 
All right, calculate that. And uh, if we preview that selected toolpath, we're not done yet. We're going to put some text in there. But what that will do for me is it uh, allows me to cut through and it aligns my tabs up. And my tabs are kind of in the middle of the project versus the bottom and things. All right. So now I got to draw a box kind of uh, giving me an idea where my bottle opener is going to be. It's I uh, the bottle opener. Oh, I don't have the exact measurement of how, how, how tall one is. Uh, but I know it's, let me see if, uh, let me steal some information from Amazon and see if they, uh, how good they are to me. Amazon.com. Let me see that, uh, those rusted bottle openers, if it gives me a height in the specs. In the specs. Uh, shipping weight, item weight. So it says package dimensions. They don't give me the individual dimensions. Well, that's silly. Uh, let's grab uh, these here and let's see if it gives me a dimension. Product dimensions. So it says two inches, two inches tall. All right, so let's go in here and make this two inches. And let's get it up off of our magnet. Oh, you can see the vectors in the background. You can see the vectors in the background. So this is wonderful for alignment. And so my keyhole is here. My vectors are, or my bottle opener is going to be here. And my magnet is going to be right below it. Uh, and let's go ahead and control alternate while I'm in transform mode and drag that. Just in the general area. These are going to get deleted. They're just for reference purposes only. And let's throw some text in here. Let's see if I can get. Let's see if I can get uh, some text. And I thought this was a funny saying, so we're going to use it. Uh, Dale, hope you don't mind, buddy. Um, It's probably not Dell's anyway. Um, <laughs> uh, so it's probably been out there somewhere before. All right, we're going to go ahead and um, let's find a text. I want something that's not too. Um, to clean something that's a little edgy, uh, especially if I'm going to use the uh, the rustic uh, wrought iron uh, type. I don't want something that's uh, you know going to be stand by. I'm sorry, have a beer, have a drink, because I'm saying stand by a lot right now. Old dreadful. No, that looks like crap. Uh, let's see here. I got a font called Old Dreadful Railway. Railway? Let's try Railway. Um, let's see here. We're going to go with a 3 8 inch tall text. Yeah, I like Railway. Okay. Um, let's throw that up in there. Railway heavy. <clears throat> Let's see if I what happens if I stretch it out a little bit. All right, I'm gonna hold down my uh, rectangle or my not my rectangle. I'm gonna hold down my shift key, grab this beer bottle while my text is selected first. And I'm going to bum, 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 open up my alignment tool and make sure that it's centered left to right, the first icon in the center category. And go. Okay. So there's number one. Number two, 
Now I got to make up my own saying. I'm the only one I remember at Dells. Um, <laughs> oh, let's see here. Uh, I don't know. I'm going to break this text block up into text lines so I can work with each of, oops, uh, delete, control Z, so I can work with each of the lines individually um, because I want to make uh, this a little bit bigger. make this a little bit smaller now I'm going to distort this within a bounding box so let's grab that uh, we talked about this last week of banners and everything so let me grab a little box here and somewhere in there okay and I'm gonna edit the envelope so I can kind of, I'm going to play around with this a little bit. I can now um, bake the distortion close that tool and what that will do is it will allow me to delete that and now I can come in and oh shoot bear with me I didn't see the bottom of my P was over on my T. All right. I can go ahead and uh, bake that distortion. Get rid of that. All right. So I want to take all of this and make sure that it's centered. I'm going to group that together. And I'm going to hold down my shift key and grab my bottle, open up my alignment tool, and align the center. Just get that little bit of shift. There's not much to it. And now I can go ahead and get rid of my two uh, areas where that's going to go. And I can create my V-Carve Toolpath. And this project is done. So V-Carve Toolpath. We're going to go uh, zero start depth. No flat depth. Uh, we're going to go V-Bit 60 degree V-Bit. And we're going to... Two five in mill and calculate that. All right, let's preview that selected tool path. All right. Wonderful. Okay.
Okay, let's pause here before we move on to the next one. Uh, let's see what we got for questions. <clears throat> Uh-oh, World Cup. You guys are going to go watch the World Cup, aren't you? Uh, in my, uh, I think, I guess that's what I'm reading. Let me, let me see where we're at. Let me catch up here. Um, well, I look like I'm late. What's again? Never. I cut my pinholes uh, quarter to uh, quarter inch in the main piece, and when I move the piece, I put a quarter inch in the waste board. Yes, Dennis, exactly. Uh, it's the same process, and by doing a quarter and quarter. You would either make sure that your pins are exactly, you know, less than a half an inch or half an inch because when you push that board down on those pinholes, you don't want the pins holding it from, you know, laying flat or, or anything like that. So you just make sure the pins you're using are smaller than that uh, half inch depth, you know, combined depth that you've got. So exactly right. Um, would the same process work if you use a dummy board as a mount? Uh, so you don't drill into your waste board. Yeah, absolutely. Sure can. Uh, so you can use a, um, uh, you know, if you have your waste board that you don't want to drill into, uh, you can secure a basically like, almost like a second waste board, right? Uh, and in this sense, uh, Baron called it a dummy board, but uh, uh, you can you can clamp a second board on there that you know you're going to drill your holes and stuff on. You're going to do all your carving in that, but that way um, you don't have to drill holes into your waste board if you don't want to do that uh, so yes absolutely you can do that uh, let's see here cost of a new waste board for me is about 750 yep so um, Dennis HDF, high density uh, fiber board. Uh, it's a little bit denser than uh, MDF. HDF also makes a great uh, material for, uh, because it is a higher density, makes a great material for vacuum tables and things like that. But on the high density, now, are, I'm sorry, are you using high density foam or are you using uh, HDF fiber, high density fiber board, which is, I've never seen it available hardly and down here in the Florida and everything. It's available overseas a lot. HDF high density fiber board, which is uh, much more dense than, um, it's almost like a hard board, but it comes in different thicknesses. Uh, are you, you are you referring to high density foam board? Because now if you're getting high density foam board for $7.50 for a four by eight or two by four, or two by eight or what have you, that's phenomenal because for a four by eight sheet of high density foam, one inch thick, it's $495 a sheet. So I would love to know where your source is. So I, I might have to talk to you about that later, Dennis. Uh, but if you're talking about high density fiber board, that's a different story. That also high density fiber board makes a great waste uh, vacuum table. Okay, so... Um, All right, so Baron's watching the game. Okay, why is it picking? Uh, why is that picking text font is always the hardest uh, uh, part most times? It is. So picking the font is the hardest part, and that's where Word Market comes in. Uh, Wordmark.it comes in very handy to help you pick your fonts uh, in things. And I didn't use Wordmark.it. Uh, to help me pick my font uh, so I could see all my fonts at a glance. But uh, it makes it very, uh, very helpful. Oh. Ooh, the Lightning versus the Capitals. Very cool. Um. Dennis says, use uh, SD50 VBit. Uh, you'll be able to uh, read it much better. 
SD50 VBIT. So that's the 90 degree. So um, Dennis is saying uh, on the text, uh, and I put it in the mail, I gotta rename that uh, VBIT. He's saying use a 90 degree VBIT. Uh, it won't be as deep and you'll be able to read it better. So let's, 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 let's look at that. I, me personally, uh, Dennis, very rarely do I use a 90 degree VBIT. I just uh, don't like them, but let's take a look. Because uh, I can't say one way or another because I don't use it and I don't know what it would look like. We're going to call this a V-bit. We don't, not gonna, we're not going to give it an angle or a size, but uh, we're going to use the um, where's my white side bit set at up here. All right. <clears throat> All right, with our text still selected, let's go ahead and calculate that. Let's reset the preview and preview uh, all sides. Oh, shoot. No, that's recalculated. Yeah, I thought I... So this is with the 90 degree V bit. The only thing that's different, I mean, my text and everything looks the same. It's just the depth of cut changes. Uh, so on this, if we were to, if I were to put my uh, bit inside the cut of the P right under there, um, cutting about 0.07 inches deep, uh, 0.07 inches deep on that P. I'm going to change this back to a V bit, 60 degree V bit. And uh, calculate that. Preview that selected toolpath. And so on that P, I'm uh, 0.125. So 70 thousandths, uh, you know, a little over a sixteenth of an inch plus versus an eighth of an inch. So the depth of cut is the only thing that changes, but the, as far as the text, it looks the same. So the shallower sometimes does make it things easier to read uh, and things, but um, uh, again, it just comes down to preference. So yeah, you can use the 60 degree as well, or the, the 90 degree as well. Uh, let's see here. And it was a V bit, not an end mill. Uh, Howard, thanks for catching me on that one. High density fiber board. Uh, Dennis, it's hard to find high density fiber board down here in uh, Florida. They don't have it. Uh, usually up north they do, and overseas, in Germany and places they have it, but um, never seen it in Florida. Okay, so that takes care of the questions uh, from what I got, the, the chatter and everything. Um, and whoops, uh, it's just like MDF, but it does not fuzz up the cutting. Yeah, uh, yeah, high density fiber board. Think of, think of your hardboard, your masonite, right? Think of masonite that they make the pegboard out of. The, just the coating of the masonite, not the inner side fibers and stuff because it's much more dense. But think of that in a half inch or a three quarter inch thickness and just that surface that solid thick surface all the way through just packed tight i mean it's a, the high density fiber is a really nice uh material and um it uh, it makes a great vacuum table uh material because uh it doesn't leak air as much as uh medium density fiber mdf okay so that takes care of that one let's go ahead and uh, go into our layers Let's turn off our layers and let's get back into our 2D view. And uh, I want to talk about, uh, I do want to talk about the beer caddy, but I think we have enough beer for right this second. I want to talk about this phone holder uh, for a minute because I really like the design. I want to change it up a bit and to refresh uh, y'all's memory, we are referring to, we're going to make this beer caddy. That's very simple. The two sides and then the racks and I'll show you how to make that uh, with the bottle opener on the side. But this is, oops, this is, uh, you know, I want to emulate this. I don't want to copy it, but I really like this elegant look. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, uh, it just looks really nice. And uh, they got a really nice finish on that select pine. 
Uh, I believe that's select pine. It looks like it, but it could be uh, something else. Beach or something. Might be beach. But um, yeah, I just like the way it looks. So we're gonna we're gonna quickly draw this or something similar to this. Now to uh, do this, especially around the base area and things, I am going to use a rectangle, and I would like my base arms. Oops. Make sure you're not drawing in an inactive toolpath. We want to create another layer here, and this is going to be called my tablet holder, because I can, I should be able to get all three pieces, maybe, maybe two of the pieces. Might be able to get all three pieces out of the one piece of wood. Uh, I want that to be active, my tablet holder to be active, so that way when I draw in here, it won't, um, it won't change now I want the width of my arms to be a, at least an inch uh, so I'm gonna go at least an inch wide for support of the base and I want the base and it's all you know full length to be about uh, I would say seven inches wide six or seven inches wide I want a good foundation for my tablet or my little cell phone whatever it is it's most likely gonna be for my tablet my Android tablet uh, so we're going to go about seven and a half inches in length. And I'm going to center that on my material for right now. And I'm going to rotate it 45 degrees. But before I do, I'm going to click copy. Copy. And then now I'm going to rotate it off its center 45 and then I'm going to click paste to get that. And while I have that here, I'm going to off its center, I'm going to go negative 45, negative 45. Okay. And on here, I'm going to take uh, my circle tool and I'm going to snap to the center of my board and I'm just going to draw a circle out. about here bum, bum, bum. actually I'm not going to do that I am going to use my arc tool I'm going to use a guide first I'm going to take a guide and I'm going to snap to here and I'm going to right click on that guide and make a new parallel guide relative to its position. I'm gonna go down, it's gonna be a negative, but I, from the end of the legs, I'd like to have about an inch and a half or two inches of those legs. So I'm gonna go, let's go with two inches, negative two inches and create that parallel guide. And um, then I'm gonna come in here uh, and uh, grab this guide that I don't need anymore and I'm gonna snap it to the end. now. Notice if I have if I keep my mouse button held down while I'm while I got this guide hand in hand, uh, you can slide your mouse anywhere you want. You know when you're holding your guide, so I'm sliding it over so I can snap my mouse to that bottom area there. And now I can right click on this and again a relative to its position, but this time we're going up, so it's a positive number. Negative is down, positive is up. We're going to create that guide and uh, click close and I can get rid of this guide. Now what this does is this gives me snapping points uh, to snap to. And I'm going to be creating an arc here. So I'm going to, I want this arc to be somewhat consistent. Uh, so I'm gonna be using my arc tools over here to kind of keep track. But I'm gonna snap here, snap, to that intersection there, and I'm gonna come down and snap. Now, my radius, that number, I have two choices actually. I can just redraw this arc snapping here and drawing that same radius, or I can just mirror this one, right? Why make it difficult on us and all when we can mirror it? Very easy. So while it's selected, I'm gonna open up my mirror tool, flip it about the job center and flip it horizontally. That way it's sure to be, 
you know, perfect. Now I'm going to take these guys here and I'm going to, uh, with them selected, I'm going to hit copy and then I'm going to rotate them on their center 90 degrees. And then I'm going to hit paste. Okay. All right. Now I can go ahead and get rid of my guides. I don't need them anymore. And now I can go ahead and start doing some trimming. So I'm going to scissor trim these inside. Oh, not that one. Uh, these inside areas away. Oh, not that one. When it disappears like that, that means there's uh, I'm off a little bit. Look at there. Look at there. Look at there. So I'll fix that in a moment too. Let's do that now. Let's undo. Let's get back where we were. And let's fix that. Oops. Holding my control key down, just hitting my arrow keys. Um, let me make sure I am connecting. I am on both sides. Okay. Uh, let's see. If this one, if that one was off, then that means this one's off. Nope, that's on on that side. That one's over. So, so said the blind man. So we're going to delete that. Let's go ahead and mirror this one. So I want it consistent. Let's mirror this. Mirror vertically. Okay. So. <laughs> it mirrored it all right. So that means that my two pieces, I wasn't quite, I don't think I'm quite centered. I might be, but. Let's uh, hold down my control key and use my arrow keys and bump that over twice. Three times a lady. All right, now I can interactively trim. Let's trim that away. Oh, Lord of mercy. All right, so what we're going to do is go into node editing mode. That one's overlapping. This one, barely. Sure, all my points. All I have to do is snap those nodes to this, and I'm just making sure that I'm splitting the line. Click the node, and I'm using my left arrow key, just splitting the line, putting that node on the center. That one's good. Okay. Now, as I was saying, I'm going to go ahead and trim away this line. Son of a bitch. What do we have in there? Oh, I'm not on that one. Node editing. Right arrow key. Split the line. There we go. Took me a moment. Just trimming these away. This is going to... Oh, you son of a gun. All right. Let's see which one. There it is right there. Get in here and go on node editing. Oops. Not that line. This line. Use my right arrow key. Pop that over. Wonderful. Okay. So a little bit of an overlap on my um, on my arcs and things, and uh, you can see the overlap and all. So if I bring that to the end, I'm using my left arrow key first, up arrow key, left up, left up, left up. Oops, let's go back down, right down. 
All I'm trying to do is get in a general direction because my clothes, my join tool is going to do everything um, for me. Down left, down left. Oops, a little too far. Uh, right up. Okay. This one as well. This should not be this. Oh, too far. Mark, when I rotated that 90, it must not have been exactly level. That's all right. All right, let's select all of this and all of it. Make sure it's 100% in the box. The join tool, I have eight open vectors. When joining, I should have one closed. And now I want my fillet tool. Uh, my fillet tool, I'm going to put a quarter inch radius. on these outer corners here and let's see what do I want to do I want to find my front because I'm gonna have the rectangle here for the arm so this would be my front Gonna give it a little bit of a different curve on the front here. And I'm gonna grab these two, this node. And snap it to the center of that line. Grab this node and snap it to the center of that line. Okay. All right, so that's going to be my base. Uh, I got a little bit of a hard corner here. That sharp point, so I'm going to just, oh, it won't let me smooth it. Not going to let me smooth it, you son of a gun. If it won't let you smooth it, I'm going to delete it. And then I'm just going to take this and pull this back. I want a nice, smooth curve. Okay, this is the front, this is the back, uh, you know, um, or vice versa. It may be that this is going to be the front because the weight of that tablet and everything, I don't want it to be front heavy, you know, where it tips over. So I may have the longer legs. One way or another, uh, we'll figure that out in a moment. Now, I need to determine how big my tenon is going to be. And my tenon is going to be based on the part, the arm. So let's go ahead and uh, draw the arm out. And let's move this over to one side. I want to try to get all three pieces out of one piece here. So we'll put that over there for a minute. All right, uh, with this guide, Try my hand at uh, right click. I want this at 0.375 in the positive. Too many decimals. Uh, 3.375 in the positive. And <clears throat> I want to create a relative guide, uh, absolute positioning. Uh, but I want it negative 3.375 and create that guide there. That gives me two consistent points. And what that allows me to do is I'm going to draw my arc. I'm going to snap to this intersection here and snap to this intersection. And my curve, my arm that I'm going to be making, What? how much do I want it to curve and stuff. And, uh, you know, that's just going to come down to preference. And for me... I'm going to go with about a four and a half inch radius. If I click there, I should be able to come over and adjust this to 4.5 and click apply. And then I'm going to use my uh, copy tool. Just copy or you can right click copy or control C, you know, different shortcuts. So I'm going to go copy 
And then I'm going to take this and I'm going to bump this back. I'm actually going to move it a certain distance relative to its position on my Y axis or my X axis, sorry, left and right. I'm going to be positive. So I want this to this arm to be about, again, I want a little bit of thickness. I want about an inch, uh, inch and a quarter. <clears throat> So let's see here. Let's go with an inch and an eighth. I'll split the middle. And now I can hit paste to put my original back in there. And with these selected, with these two items selected, I'm just going to join them with a straight line once and twice to close off that vector, that, that arch. Now, if we look at this, if we look at this piece here, uh, on that arch, what we need is, what has to be done is, when this piece is flat, down at the bottom, this end, when it is flat, 90 degrees to the base or whatever you want to call it, Whatever our arc and curve is and whatever we want to tilt our uh, pad or phone or what have you, whatever we want this head to be tilted at, then you know we, we're gonna we're gonna adjust those angles and things. So right now by closing off those vectors, you know, I I'm the top part still needs to be adjusted. Um, I want this to have more of a forward tilt to it. So when I rotate, if I open up my rotate tool, I have a pivot point. I have a pivot point, this circle right here in the middle. I want to drag this down, hold down my left mouse button. I want to drag this down and snap it to this bottom left corner. This way, when I rotate now, I have, I'm pivoting off of that point. Okay, so I want this, you know, piece imagining if I'm trying to imagine myself, uh, let's go back for a moment. Let's draw a rectangle down here for a second, just so you can kind of get a feel for it. Let's imagine that let's imagine that this is our base down here. I'll highlight it with pink. You know, and where, how much of an arc, where is this going to be positioned? So first off, if this were my base, this part is going to be, um, you know, sitting more towards the back. Okay. And so therefore, what do I want this curve to be? Do I need to adjust my arc? Do I need to adjust anything? So I just want a slight lean forward. And now that I have that lean here, that tells me where to, when I'm in node editing, that tells me where to bring this. Now I could just drag this straight down and snap to it, uh, you know, this line, my guide, but I'm going to use my keyboard shortcuts. I'm going to click on this node here. I'm going to select this node here and I'm going to hit the letter Y on my keyboard. Y is up and down. And I'm going to hit the letter Y on my keyboard to bring that down into alignment with that first node that I selected. So that now um, is giving me my flat, you know, shape and the curve that I want. All right. So now I'm going to take this and I want, I want a nice look here, you know. But I would like it to, if I go into node editing on it, I would like to take this node here and bump it straight back with my arrow key. I want to give it a little bit of, uh, you know, a little bit of width on that bottom edge. And now, on this upper part, where when when I put that head on, uh, let's let's draw a rectangle and kind of represent that. Uh, I don't need I don't need my guides anymore. So view guidelines, delete all guides. Let's get rid of those.
Okay. So now, on a 90 degree plane, straight up and down, I'm going to basically figure out what my rotation, what angle do I want. And so, um, you know, what angle do I want to, you know, have my iPad resting? Uh, hell, if I wanted to, I could make a pivoting one that pivots, but I want it fixed, you know, permanently fixed. So for me, aesthetically, that looks uh, like a good angle. It's enough to get my iPad to lean back. I'm going to have my pegs at the bottom and, uh, you know, that's a nice subtle little angle. It's a good, probably a good viewing angle from, you know, where it's at. Uh, if looking at this, you know, the angle, I could go more, I could be more extreme, but I want to kind of be more face on. Now with that angle in mind, I'm going to take and I'm going to just anywhere in here, just kind of snap to that. And what that does now is if I go into node editing, it gives me the position where I to go. So if I select this node and grab this one, and now I'm going left and right, my X axis, I'm gonna put that in alignment. And of course it shot past it because we got a tilt, right? But now I can bring it back. Oops, not when you got both nodes selected, uh, only select one of the nodes, the one you wanna move. Now I can bring it back and snap to there. And I'm also gonna go a little bit wider here for my base. And now I can delete this and this down here. And this is going to be my second part. But the second part, there's going to be a tenon on the top and the bottom. So I got to draw those in. There's going to be a tenon that's going to be going into my mortises, you know, on my three parts and stuff. Um, so, uh, what I need to figure out is first of all, what size material am I using? Uh, if we look at this uh, stand here, oops, uh, it looks to be about about a, a, a half inch, three eighths, you know, very thin and slim, slim, very visual peeling. It's not bulky and fat with three quarter inch material. So, um, you know, that's important. And, uh, Right, you can use SketchUp for the design and work dinner. Um, and so, on my um, tenon, I'm going to draw a rectangle. And right now, I'm just going to uh, draw it out. So, my material, I got to first of all, I got to think of two things. One, how big is my material going to be? How thick is my material going to be? Because that's going to tell me how deep my mortise is. My mortise going to be a blind mortise, cutting partially through, uh, or is it going to be a through mortise where I can actually, if I tilted this thing upside down, I'd see the tenon, you know, through the other side. Uh, it's going to be blind. Um, I prefer, and so I'm going to go far as the width, that's going to be my thickness of my material. So if I have my material is three eighths, I'm going to go point and I want enough that it gets a good glue joint. Glue is going to be stronger than the wood, you know, when I glue this together uh, and all, but uh, you know, I do not want my tablet to fall and break and all that stuff. So uh, my material is going to be 0.375, you know, maybe, maybe even a half inch thick. So uh, let's go 0.3 on the width. And now I can come and snap this uh, somewhere. I'll find the center in a minute. Let's rotate. And if I find my center point, you know, you can slide when you, when you're, when you, when you grab. Like when you grab a, a point, you see this little X with the line slashing through it. That lets me know I'm grabbing on the center of this vector. And so, therefore, I can slide along this edge, and I can find that same point, okay? And that lets me know I'm at the center of this piece where I need to align this, all right? Okie dokie. And I'm gonna use this 
Uh, I'm going to hold down my control key so I can make a copy of it. And I'm going to drag it down here. I'm going to grab this corner and I'm just going to snap it to that line. I'm going to go ahead and uh, rotate and do that. Let's see here. And if I open my rotate tool, it gives me a rotate point. I can actually just grab it and put it on this corner, snap to this corner. So that way when I use my rotate anchors, I'm pivoting off that point. And so, you know, I can pivot off that point, uh, whatever it uh, may be. All right, and now I'm going to grab it at the center, find the center of it, and I'm gonna drag it until I find the center of my other part right there. And it'll snap to it. So there's my two tenons. Now, when these tenons get cut, because this is gonna be a two-sided project and everything, uh, this there's gonna be a pocket cut that is going to come and literally mill down this tenon. And so I, I need to create that boundary for the pocket cut. Uh, that, that rectangular boundary for the pocket cut that I'm cutting because it's going to mill this down uh, a very thin amount. I want it to, uh, I don't want it to be as thick as my material. I want it to be uh, thinned out on both sides. And so I'm going to take this and I'm going to offset outward just a, uh, a small amount. Um, I want my bit to be able to clear all pieces. I'm going to be using a quarter inch end mill. So if I offset outward uh, quarter inch, that should be good, 0.25. Create sharp corners, I can offset that. I could actually probably offset an eighth of an inch. Yeah, it doesn't need to be that big. Let's, let's go split that in half eighth of an inch all the way around there we go all right because it, all i care about is uh when my quarter inch um diameter bit is cutting and it is only gonna, it's going to be cutting inside this pocket right so it's going to be milling here it's going to come you know to this line it's going to mill over to here and that's all I care about is that you know I'm gonna be cutting this tenon you know right there now I do not want it cutting into my part up here right so we're going to grab this double click on it grab it right in the middle and snap right down to that line and I don't need this much width so And now I can use that same rectangle after I get it all centered up and everything. Um, I believe it is centered. Uh, I can use that same rectangle if I hold down my control key. I can use that for the tenon up here. And I'm just going to rotate it. Snap to the center. I could get my pivot angle in there and all, uh, but I'm just going to pull this down and level it out. Okay. Now I want to take and grab it by the center so I can snap to the you know center of my uh, part. All right. Excellent. So those are going to be my pockets. Uh, my pockets. Now, how much material am I taking off this 3 8 inch arm? How much material am I taking off each side of it uh, for this tenon? Uh, because that, knowing that number, is going to tell me how wide my mortises need to be. How wide my mortises need to be. And so... If this is 3 8 and let's say that I take it down, you know, a 16th off each side, okay? So let's 
open up the size tool here and on the height if I have a and just show you the math function in this if I'm gonna be taking a sixteenth of an inch uh, times two which we know is an eighth of an inch right mm -hmm. all right so an eighth of an inch that I'm gonna be taking um, off of this three eighths so if I go in here and I can get rid of my leading zero I don't need that but my 0.375 minus an eighth of an inch equals sign is a quarter so my width only needs to be a quarter inch wide for this tenon here and so uh, with a quarter now my length you know how long it is well how long is my tenon so um, my tenon and I'm not going to use that because that doesn't give me an accurate measurement I am going to use my measure tool like my little tape measure here and I'm gonna measure from this line to this line and it's 0.49 or 4894 that's the length 4894 so that's what my length needs to be so we're gonna go 0.4894 uncheck the link XY and my height is gonna be a quarter of an inch and click apply okay that's my tenant now when my router bit comes to cut out this uh, tenon, my quarter inch router bit, it is the same size as my, if I center it, let's grab this and this on center. Let me find my center, let me find my center, my alignment tool, I was wondering what I'm doing there. Um, my diameter is the same or my diameter of my box here is the same size as my cutter well that requires a special type of fillet the t-bone fillet so with a t-bone fillet we are there used for creating clearances in internal corners where the slot is the same size as the tool okay and um the dog bone fillet is used for clearing um, is a fillet used for clearing uh, internal corners where the slotted pieces to fit together and stuff. Well, in this case, I need to use my T-bone fillet. And with that fillet tool, my radius of my router bit is uh, 125. Uh, my tool radius is uh, 125, half of that quarter inch. And I need to create my dog bone uh, fill it and where you click you know is very important you know if I notice that I can't you know click anywhere on the edges here there's nothing to do but when I get to that corner or that inside edge you know and what I want to do is I want to make sure that um, my fillets my areas here I really don't want to that's a big fillet I want to make sure that no matter what that this joint here is not seen when this is glued in and that's quite a big fillet there so I'm not gonna do that it's all in the aesthetics this is supposed to be a nice slim line piece so what I'm gonna do is I have to use an eighth inch end mill. Just gotta. There's there's no if ands or buts about it because otherwise it's going to be um, unsightly. It, it just won't look good. So I'm gonna use an eighth inch end mill to cut that pocket out. What that means for me if I'm using an eighth inch end mill to cut the pocket out uh, is that the 
uh, I need these, uh, you know, two parts to fit together. So I have to use this, uh, you know, the dog bone fillets now. And my dog bone fillet should still be hidden by that piece that's getting covered. So if I go with my dog bone fillets, my tool radius is now changed to a 16th of an inch. We're almost done, guys, I promise. Uh, we're going to use the dog bone fillet here. Or I could... I could still use the T-bone fillet. Let me see what the T-bone fillet allows me to do. Let me check my measurements real quick on this. <clears throat> ah, 0.3757. And my material is 0.375. Come on. All right, so what that means is I'm going to... Man, freaking seven thousand something. You'd barely even see that for freaking. That's way out of. Uh, I mean, that's seven ten thousand. <laughs> that sucks. All right, let's see here. We're gonna make the tenon a little narrower. Uh, so instead of milling a uh, you know an eighth of an inch, a sixteenth off each side, I'm going to uh, mill it down a little bit more. So let me undo these so I can do my. I'm still going to use my uh, eighth inch end mill, but that will allow me to decrease the size of this slightly, just so slightly. Uh, so uh, it's covered and hidden when I put my part in. So if I take uh, my size tool here. And I'm going to do my math first. So on my 3 8 of an inch, 0.375, and I take off, instead of a 16th of an inch, I'm going to go 0 0.0625, 0 0.07 off each side. So uh, that's um, 0 0.07, and then... Minus uh, 0 0.07. Okay, so 2325 is going to be my width. There we go. So I got to remember that 0 0.07 depth of cut for my pocket. I got to remember that. Um, so now I can take and put my fillets in there. Uh, dog bone fillet. T bone, or yeah, uh, T bone fillet. Thank you. Perfect. Let's measure it. Yep, 0 0.3607, good. That's good enough for me. Now, the same radius, the same fillet, I need to put on my part here. But in order for me to put the fillet on the part, I have to weld these parts together. The, just my tenon and the actual arc. So before I don't want uh, I don't want to lose the individual items. So I'm going to take these guys here and I'm going to right click because I want to use them for my profile cuts and stuff like that. Uh, but I'm going to go ahead and um, copy them to another layer. And this is going to be my arm boundaries sorry guys didn't want to drag this out it was only supposed to be an hour long uh, arm boundaries and I don't need them visible right at the moment okay 
Uh, what that will allow me to do is take my three parts here, these three guys, and weld them together. Uh, most likely they're not going to weld while I have my other rectangles in here. Let's get these out of the way. Let's move them. This is, uh, these two are going to get moved to a, or, uh, moved, not copied, moved to a layer. And this is going to be my pocket boundaries. That way I can turn the pocket boundaries off for a moment. Okay, now I can select my three parts. Weld those together. A little bit of a, uh, that's telling me that my part is not uh, completely level. Uh, my tenon's not completely level, so I'm gonna undo that. And I'm going to make sure that my angle of my dangle, I can see the gap. The more you go in, you see that gap that's there? Right, we don't want that, we, don't, we can't have that. So I'm going to go into my rotate, open my rotate tool, Grab my pivot point, make sure that I'm on this corner, snap to that corner, and that's going to allow me to pivot point and get on there. And I have, should have that little bit, very slight amount of overlap. Yep, which is good. I can even, if I wanted to, I can pivot back a little bit more. Oh, that's why I'm pivoting down. Let me move, bear with me a second. And let me get out of rotate for a minute. This corner should be snapped there. And my pivot point should, oh, you son of a gun. It's very important where your vectors are. Okay, now I can grab my pivot point. Okay. Sorry about that. Let me get this lined up. I got to center everything and stuff again after I uh, get it pivoted, but. Okay, nice. All right. So let's make sure that I'm centered. And I am. All right. So now this one was doing the same thing, which means that it was uh, not quite level. And you can see the more we zoom in, that's about the max I can zoom in, but you can see that air gap. And it's very important, very crucial. I'm going to move my pivot point out of the way for a minute. It's very important that we are, you know, um, that we're making contact, that we're in, you know, when we're when we're cutting and things, that we're in the line where we're supposed to, you know, where we, where we're meant to be, and um, the uh, uh, when when you see things like those lines that I saw, that let me know right away that there was something uh, wrong. Okay. Now I should be able to weld my part, you son of a bitch. All right, ever so slightly. Well, let's trim it away. Is it going to let me trim it? No. It won't let me trim. That means there's an intersection. Oh, let's get in there. Okay. Last time, last time, because I'm not going to play your game.
Uh, my space bar keeps opening my circle tool. Alright. Move my pivot point out of the way. Make sure I'm grabbing right on that corner and snap it to that line. No ifs, ands, or buts there. Now, my pivot point snap to that corner. No ifs, ands, or buts there now. Rotate. Alright. Voila! <laughs> Let's go up here and do that same thing. My goodness, Mary Jane. Alright. So, just did that just for a moment to see what side was off for me. Sometimes you gotta zoom, zoom in, and sometimes you also gotta pull that part away and come in and re-snap. Uh, you know, um, do what you do, you know, do what you can, you know, and re-snap to it. I should be good there. I shouldn't have to rotate or anything, so let me. Nope. What the hell? I'm snapping. Or am I snapping to the wrong place? Be careful what you're clicking on. Make sure you. Um, make sure that I'm still centered. Very important. All right, let's weld that together. Wasted an hour on that part. Okay, so there's my part. Now I want to make sure that I turn my um, pocket boundary layer back on uh, to uh, if I'm going to move this part to position it or you know for cutting and everything. Uh, I want to make sure you know like when my router bit cuts these parts out and all uh, that I take all of my boundaries and everything with me and all. Um, and the, let's move this a little bit. Okay. Uh, as far as my parts, uh, let's go ahead and turn on my arm boundaries or turn off my arm boundaries I'm actually gonna leave it there I think I can get my third part out of here if I rotate this one all right let's get rid of that circle oh uh, no we're not getting rid of that circle uh, let me show you what just real quick here the t-bone fillet so this part here has to be able to fit in here nicely and everything well when that router comes and cuts this outside corner here, this part here, it's gonna create that radius. It's not gonna give us a nice flat cut. Um, it's gonna, you know, it's not gonna give us a nice flat cut with that radius and all, and square peg, round hole scenario. So we need to make sure that we use our T-bone fillets. And this time, uh, we want on our T-bone fillets, we want to make sure it's very important where you click and what vector you click on. We want to go inward, okay? And the same thing here on this side, we want to bring it inward, all right? Down here, bring that in. That gives the router bit a nice place to go, and then our tenon has a nice flat, flat point. If I were to have, let's say that I came up here and I clicked on that and I put the, the, the dog bone there, you know, and there, what does that do for us? Not a thing. It doesn't help us at all. 
Uh, so we want to come on the side here and bring this in. Okay. So there's my two vectors. I can get rid of this circle now, that router bit simulation. So I've got my mortise and tenon for this part actually down here and here. I got my mortise and tenon and all. And um, my arm. So now the top part... That just comes down to uh, you know what you want. I may, uh, for some fun and kicking giggles, uh, think of like a little man. I may have a little body with a head up here that smiles at you or something and have two arms that come out and hold the top while the uh, bottom of the legs hold the bottom. I don't know. Uh, whatever it may be. We're not going to draw all that. So we're going to kind of uh, emulate this, but I'm just doing this. I want you guys to um, use your imagination, you know. Uh, when it comes to it. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, for this part Oh, let's see here. It's going to be I want a good, I got a 10 inch tablet. So uh, I, you gotta remember my legs are gonna be sprawled out a little bit, but I want a good uh, distance. So let's say that uh, four inches, four inches would be good. And let's go ahead and um, might have to do some rotating on this arm so I can get this part cut out. But let me get this part drawn and then I'll figure out where it goes. Oh, let's see here. Undo that. Got to use guides. Got to use guides. Uh, let's go snap to here. And then... Shh. Don't you be barking at me. Going to go up. Positive number. I want to go just uh, literally... Not much, three eighths of an inch. Let's go a half an inch. And take this guide, snap to this lower corner. Now we're going down relatively. So it's a negative number. I know I'm off my board, but that's all right. We'll position this. We'll get these all three parts to cut out one board. Uh, let's take these guys here and get rid of those for a minute. You son of a gun. Don't, don't move the guys you just, uh, don't move the guys that you just, um, created like a, like a dumbass. <laughs> don't move the guys you just created. I want to keep this one. Okay. So node editing. Uh, I'm just going to bring this node and snap to this guide. Bring this node and snap to this guide. Straight line um, to create that sprawl. I'm going to turn this. Um, Uh, three, 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 three quarter legs, three quarter legs. So, uh, positive. 
0.75, get rid of those numbers, create that guide there, close. On this one, negative relative to its position because um, it's going down. And that gives me a place to, when I'm in node editing, gives me a place to insert a point. And I can turn this line into an arc. Actually, I can, an arc is good. Yep, an arc is fine. All right, uh, I am gonna use a little bit of a radius here just to kind of round off and, and soften up the edges. I don't need the guides anymore. Um, view, guidelines, delete all guides. And I'm gonna use a normal fillet, the normal fillet tool, and just a very, just a small, subtle roundness. I'm gonna go an eighth of an inch. Uh, radius and I'm just going to kind of soften up uh, these edges and uh, oh editing let's turn this line into an arc a nice small curve yeah turn this one to an arc Oop. delete this point delete that middle point uh, turn it into an arc. It always wants to poke out one direction or another. I just want a nice little curve. And what I'll end up doing if I if I when I turn this around and look it straight out, you know, as I as I turn it around, if I'm not happy with the curves, you know, I may think they're uneven or something. Like if I were to rotate this, um, and f you know. If, if I felt like in some way they weren't even or whatever, then I would just split this in half and just mirror it over. And but all, but uh, that actually doesn't look bad. And all right, so now that I have that part, I can go ahead and kind of rotate and figure out where it's going to, uh, you know, where it's going to fit uh, when cutting out and things. So let's. Um, Whatever I do, I need to make sure my router bit can come in and cut without uh, cutting into other parts. This one has two parts together. I'm gonna go ahead and group them together so they don't get moved. That way I can rotate these freely. And I don't mind if uh, my part is um, kissing the edge because that's, you know, that's all waste wood anyway. Let me group these together real quick. That'll work. I believe I have a quarter of an inch. If I take my measure tool and uh, grab a point, any point, and measure from here to here, uh, I've got three eighths of an inch, plenty of material for my quarter inch bit to fit through. Um, plenty, because this is a pocket cut. This is not my vector. That's just a boundary for my pocket cut. 
So that's good. Now, on here, I've got to think about uh, my cutting this part out because I have to mill off on both sides of this piece. I could take advantage of that and have uh, the bottom side of this. I, you know, if I was going to flip it over, I could engrave my company name or something while I'm on the base, you know, underneath, whatever the case may be. But this part does have to be flipped. And uh, I had my job set up to flip, uh, you know, along the X axis. Uh, I'm going to flip along the Y axis so I can put my pivot pins up here and down here. So I'm going to go into my job change real quick. And that's going to change that to the X axis or the Y axis, sorry, for my pivot. I don't want to recalculate the tool pass right at this moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I need to draw my pivot holes. Quarter inch diameter. I still got to put my tenon in here where this is going to go in the tenon. Uh, but that's on the, you know, uh, yeah. So bear with me a second. That that's I have not forgot about that. Uh, let's go ahead and mirror that uh, circle, that pivot hole, that pin hole. Let's mirror that uh, mirror copy about job center vertical. And now we've got our pin holes. I'm not going to create the tool pass on this. I'm just going to kind of get over on the other side. We're going to create the last uh, uh, profile cut, but um, since these are the bottom sides and stuff, uh, let's go ahead and uh, this is going to be the back side. My good side of my wood is going to be face down in this case, you know, so let's go ahead and get the tenon on here. And if we look at our last uh, last representation of the image, whoops, uh, a little high and centered, right? Kind of deal. Uh, somewhere in that middle area. Um so on my rectangle, um, I want to make sure that I'm matching this angle here, you know, up on the top of my straight edge and all. So again, now I, I since both tenons are going to be the same, I can actually just take this here without having to redraw it. Let's ungroup it. And I can copy this vector. It's the same tenon, same dimension. So control key and drag this up. Now the key thing here is going to be uh, rotating this and snapping it to here. I need, I don't want my, I don't want to have a, a thing just ever so slightly tilting that I always have to stare at it and go, son of a, you know. Every time I'm looking at my tablet and I'm having to tilt my head 10 degrees or something. So we want to be right on. And this is the. Um, if I. Uh, let's see here. Here, let's find out. Let's grab our measure tool here and let's click here. And here, my angle is 59.9 degrees. Okay, 59.9 degrees uh, angle. Okay, so on this, not knowing what my original angle was, uh, if I oh, what would be an easy way to do this? Guideline, grab this and snap that vector to the guide, rotate, well that rotate wasn't very helpful. Just barely over the line, just barely over the line. If I take this and 
snap to it. Alright, so now I can go into my uh, rotate tool that I just had open and closed. Uh, rotate off of its center, the part's center, this piece's center, 59.9 degrees. The other direction. No. Let's see if I'm at 90. Ah, uh, it's going to be... Oh, well, that sucks. Never mind. That didn't work. Yeah, because I'm stupid. It uh, it was going to be based... It's based off the part, not off of a straight line. Oh, idiocracy. Okay. Good enough for government work. All right, so let's get it centered up. Grab the part center, slide down the line until I find my other part center. And now I need to find, you know, about where I want to um, position this down. And... Okay. All right, so this is the parts for the stand. Um, what we're gonna do, guys, is uh, this one's taking actually a little longer than I thought. Uh, we're gonna cancel, we're gonna, because uh, we did get a late start tonight. Uh, we're gonna stop here. Uh, we're gonna continue this um, whenever y'all want. We'll continue it Monday. Um, but in the meantime, I will create these DXFs and everything, and I'll have them in the you, uh, the Facebook group tonight uh, for you. That way, if uh, come Monday, you want to work along with me or what have you for the other things that we're going to do on the other side of this, uh, creating the tool pass and stuff, you'll at least have the vector files um, or, or whatever the case may be. But we are going to uh, end here. Uh, I am going to answer some of your questions. Uh, real quick before we leave, but um, we'll get into the beer caddy and stuff on Monday. It's 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 getting uh, it's almost 10:30 at night, and uh, there's a lot to do. All right, so um, let's go up and let's let me look at some of your questions here, our comments and stuff. Uh, let's see here. So Dennis, you were making comments when I was talking about the dog bone fillets and all about using a small chisel and things. Yeah, I mean, you can use a small chisel and you can round off your square edges uh, and, and everything, um, and, you know, for that mortise and tenon joint. Uh, but I'm not, you know, I'm not using hand tools. You know, I'm using a machine. So if I, you know, if I was Roy Underhill... Uh, and uh, using hand tools and stuff, then yeah, I'd use a small chisel and round off those corners to uh, 
of that uh, tenon to uh, get it to fit into that uh, mortise. Or I'd just square up a mortise uh, with my chisels and all. <laughs> but I'm using a machine, so um, chisels are out. But yes, you could. Uh, technically, you could. You could just cut it and you could use small chisel to chisel on your parts. All right, let's see here. Um, you have more room in front of the tenon on the side. No. Now you're also telling me to use the dog bone fillets and everything. Well, uh, for the mortise and tenon for this particular one, I'll have to look at that because the, the, uh, for this type of uh, tenon joint and everything, uh, it would be the T-bone fillets. But, you know, uh, also if I'm using, you know, if I'm, if I'm, uh, you know, uh, doing through mortises and stuff, uh, you know, it could be the, it could be the dog bone as well. So there's two applications there. So it could be either or. As long as one doesn't make my part wider than the other, you know, because I want those joints to be hidden. I want those those fillets to be hidden and stuff. So I'll take a closer look at that and I'll let you know on Monday about the dog bone fillet. Uh, and I know the, the jog bone pushes out uh, the front and the side, right? Uh, they put The dog bone pushes out from the angles, from the corners, from the corners, creating that dog bone effect, that dog bone look. And I just don't want my corners because that's the widest part of my design. I don't want them pushing out further. Uh, and then me having to compensate like I had earlier too is to make my, my tenon smaller. Um, but we'll look at it. I'll look at it and then I'll let you guys know. Would nesting help, tool help? Yes, it would, Dennis. The nesting tool would be would have been wonderful if I would have used it for those three parts. Um, I could have absolutely used it. I just want to make, uh, you know, like if I were to grab all these parts, uh, first of all, always group together parts that are inside of you know other parts when they belong. So if we group that together, group this one together, and uh, we'll group those together. If I were to grab those parts and Turn this off. Use my nesting tool. Uh, I'm using a quarter inch end mill. I want a clearance of at least 0.375 uh, between the parts. Um, I can rotate the parts to fit. I do not want to mirror them. I, I have a good side and a bad side. You know, I'm going to pick the nicest, prettiest pieces for the faces and everything. Um, and technically, I could mirror the part because this is technically the face of the base, right? This is the back of this part. Uh, so really it doesn't matter. So I could mirror the parts for best fit. Um, no. No, I'll just do the rotation. Uh, preview. Okay, let's uh, see what happens if we do mirror. It's wanting to throw me in. Uh, let's change our angle. Still wanting to throw me into two boards. Oh, ba 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 da 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 da. I can be up against the edge. Let's change my angle even more. Let's go uh, thirty degrees. 35 still wanting to throw me anything so you know it's a fine line uh, let's go 75 degrees still wanting to throw me into two boards so in this case the nesting tool is not doing me any favors so manually moving them is just easy to find you know might find my parts and all or else I'm just going to be trying different angles with the nesting tool and stuff, which is six and one, half a dozen and another. You know, so either one, either one. You're playing around with it and getting it right. Um, all right, so um, yep, find the angle, uh, find the angle that it's at now, and do some math. Uh, yeah, right. We could, uh, uh, we could do, you know. Uh, uh, we could do 
our uh, trigonometry math and find our angles and things uh, but I'll leave that for another day <laughs> uh, let's see here night y'all have a good one uh, how are all right Dennis so draw a straight line and find the angle for both uh, then you could uh, then you could move them yeah um, so the on my straight line if I come over here what Dennis is saying and correct me if I'm wrong Dennis what Dennis is saying is let's say that I snap here and draw a 90 degree angle okay and I come over here now I have a choice I can use my measure tool you know from my straight to here my angle is 2.5 degrees right from square okay 2.5 degrees and so um, the if you wanted to you could even put a, the dimension in the board uh, let's say that I grab this here and I measure from here to here right that uh, you know whatever that angle may be um, let me undo that because that was the wrong direction on my angle so let's undo close escape escape hold on escape escape okay Whew. all right so on the angle tool you find you click up high not down low where I was you click up high from here to here okay and then you find your you know basic kind of apex um, and it will basically and I don't see I don't like that tool because it gives me the big number 286.3 versus the 2.5 you know what I mean um, anyhow so 2.5 degrees uh, meaning that if I had and I'll draw a square I'm not moving my part not ahead but if I drew my square here and I rotated that square 2.5 degrees on its center 2.5 negative direction because I want to go up negative negative grass I'm a negative 2.5 Mmm, it's a small looking angle. No, that's not it, Dennis. That's not it. So, um, draw a line and find both angles for both. So, let's get rid of that. We're going to have to use... <clears throat> from here, straight across. Uh, let's see what's gonna be the best way to do this I kind of want to be a straight line more so than anything I need really a right angle so let's do that let's do that let's do that let's do that let's do it balls let's do it all right so draw a straight line we're gonna click down here I'm gonna snap uh, somewhere here I'm gonna pick a 90 degrees and go there and as I come uh, down we'll see when I get into the uh, 90 degree range I should be able to see my 90 degrees Okie dokie. That still goes into the truck trigonometry, you know, for finding. 
I'm not too single. <laughs> uh, I don't want to do that in there, buddy boy. All right, if I start here and I click here and move that there, there's my angle. Tardar. I know. 30.1 degrees there, Dennis. 30.1 degrees, Dennis. So drawing the straight lines works. Okay, so you just got to know how to use the tools, and evidently I'm a dumbass. All right, so rotate that. Let's rotate that uh, off its center. 30.1 degrees, and, uh, negative, because I'm going in the other direction. Negative 30.1 degrees. Click Apply. If I drag this center, if I grab on this and grab this center, and I snap to there, ta -ga da -ga da and there you go. Ah, the shit we do. <laughs> Very good, Dennis. Thank you, sir. Uh, so that would have been an easy way of, uh, rather than rotate, move, rotate, move, rotate, move, scroll in, rotate, scroll in, rotate, you know, that I was doing. Draw a straight line. Draw a 90 degree line. Measure it with the measure tool. Um, very good. All right, guys and girls, uh, I don't see any other comments or anything or questions at all. It's late. Enjoy uh, your evening. We're going to pick this up. Uh, I'm going to figure out if there's any change or adjustments I want to make to this. I think this is going to be good. Um, we'll pick this up Monday. And. Um, I'm going to go ahead and uh, carve it out uh, between now and then. Uh, make sure, you know, everything goes well uh, as far as, you know, I got enough balance and stuff like that. Uh, I'll show you guys the prototype, the carved piece, and uh, we'll look at it Monday and then we'll see what adjustments we need to make, if any. All right. I've got to let my dogs out and uh, they've been barking at me all night. They've got to go tinkle. I want to thank you for joining me uh, this evening, and um, hopefully this was somewhat eventful. Uh, so we've got two options here. We've got our bottles, uh, pop top bottles, and uh, we've got our part. We haven't made the toolpath. We will do the toolpath for this on Monday. Uh, but in the meantime, between now and Monday, I will uh, probably in the next couple hours go out and carve this uh, real quick, cut it out. And I will uh, make sure there's no changes that need to be made. And I'll share the vectors on the Facebook file. You guys can download it if you want to open it up and work with next week making the tool pass for it. Or you have it for making any adjustments. And then we're going to also look at, uh, we'll finish this one up and we'll look at the beer caddy and some other things. So, uh, uh, yes, David. Uh, now you guys can take your Monday off for holiday. Um, I think, what is it, Memorial Day? Memorial Day. Uh, we shall never forget. Um... Yeah, and uh, is that is it Memorial Day or is it Labor Day? Uh, let me hear. Let me look at my calendar. I should know this stuff. <clears throat> let me look at my calendar because I don't get a day off, guys. So it's just like it's a day. Uh, let's see. We still gotta honor those. So what is Monday? Monday is Memorial Day. So. We may mix that up then. We may do a Memorial Day project, but we're still going to do a project on Monday. So we'll still have a class on Monday. Yes, sir, yes, sir, yes. Sir. Unless you guys want day off and we can change it to Tuesday for that night and we'll have a class Tuesday and Wednesday instead of Monday and Wednesday. Uh, throw some comments out there in the comments and uh, sections so I can see Monday. Or take Memorial Day and off kind of thing for the evening uh, and have some fireworks and some beers and remember uh, or, and then have class Tuesday. Let me know. And go. <laughs> All right. I will keep an eye on the chat. Uh, you can also post in the group comment section under this video link. Uh, let me know if you want to change next week's class to Monday uh, or Tuesday instead of Monday and take Monday holiday off. Uh, but on Monday we will finish, or Tuesday, whichever one y'all decide, we will finish up this project. We'll do the beer caddy and we'll even throw in a little memorial project to Memorial Day project as well. 
All right. All right. All right, guys and girls, have a great day, and uh, I will talk to you later. Thank you very much for joining me. Bye now.